day two at Madex 2017 in Busan, South Korea. Today we're focusing on effectors such as missile systems, rockets and remote weapon systems, as well as unmanned surface vehicles. I'm really glad to introduce our Navy RCWS, which stands for Remote Control Weapon Station. We just recently developed this, uh, recent, this uh, weapon station. It's going to be installed in the Korean Navy vessels. As you may see, it has a single barrel, which has the uh, dimension for 7.62 millimeter. The, uh, the cameras can detect in, a, in, the, in the nighttime and the daytime. The available range is approximately about 10 kilometers. We started to develop this product because of, uh, you may uh, recall the battle at the Yeonpyeong Sea in Korea. We lost six soldiers during that battle. So in order to save the life of the soldiers and improve the strength of our, our Navy, we developed this product and we are very proud to introduce to you today. And this 130 mm guided rocket is the first time to display in Madex. This 100 guided rocket will be applied to the, the fast and the multi-target on the sea. I believe this 130 millimeter the launcher and the missile will be installed on the smaller ship in the Korean Navy, especially in the, the near near water, like a littoral water. The name of the ship will be PKX Bravo. The one launcher can hold the, the around the 12 the the rocket. This 130 mm guided rocket concept is we put the guidance on the rocket so it's further the cost and effectiveness. The range is near the, the within the horizon. So that means that we can take the radar with, the, with my own ship radar, then we can respond immediately to, on the, the commanding officer's decision. The right side is a, the, basically the 2.75 inch rocket that we put the guidance on it the, with the, the image and IR guidance. So it's a smaller than this, so range is around the, the 8 to 9 kilometers. This 130 millimeter guided rocket has a big advantage for the smaller ship. Smaller ship, it, they have a problem to carry on the, the big the ship to ship missile, but with this one, the smaller ship can have uh, the precision strike capability, so it's going to be the, the big the benefit to the, the Korean Navy. This is unmanned the surface vehicle. The product name is, is a Sea Sword. This UAV project is done by done by the, on the cooperation with DAPA. DAPA gave, a, gave us a fund, also we invest a fund together. The primary mission is a literal, literal area, the surveillance and reconnaissance. Yeah, we have uh, several the, the systems on it, like a radar and LIDAR and electronic optic system. Can you see that the four antennas over the top that look like a candles? It's a transmission antenna and the small Small antenna is for LiDAR and 
and uh, division radar and EOIR system on it. Uh, this is uh, the USB control uh, section. The USB can be controlled by the auto track. The pre that means they're gonna the follow the tracks on a pre-planned the schedule, or they can control the by manual. So it can be the, the extended the, the maximum 12 kilometer, but we during the test we found out that the 15 kilometers also available. So when they lost the contact order from the control station, they're gonna return to base by automat automatic uh, program. This is the second version of the, the unmanned surface vehicle. We are on the, the concept design now. So it's gonna be the, the longer than version one. Even the version one is eight meter, this one will be the 12 meter longer. Now basically we're gonna use the same the surveillance system on it. And, but we are, we are thinking of uh, unmanned the underwater vehicle operation also and also we are the thinking of the installation of the armament like uh, the 70 millimeter rocket or a torpedo the like that or the gun RWCS gun we are focusing on the mul multiple type of missions like uh, anti-submarine warfare the also the anti the surface warfare even we, are, we can think about the anti-air warfare too Raytheon has been working with the Republic of Korea since its, its founding. Uh, Raytheon products and services have been a part of the Ministry of National Defense um, since 1953 with the tr transition of the uh, assets that were with the U.S. Um, Raytheon is uh, currently in discussions with the MND across all of the services. Um, but today, I'm happy to talk to you about what we're doing in support of the ROC Navy. Uh, we have a number of systems that are currently in the uh, ROC Navy inventory. Uh, we have the Phalanx SeaWiz system, which is a close-in weapons system for ship self-defense. We have the rolling airframe missile that is in service as well, that it again does ship to self-defense. And we have standard missile 2, uh, which is on display behind me, that, that is uh, in service with them as well. We're, we're currently in discussions with the uh, Korean Navy to look at adding two new capabilities to their inventory. The standard missile 6 that I have on display here and standard missile 3 which is also right, right behind me that I'd like to discuss with you uh, each in more detail. The family of missiles that, that we're, uh, we're in discussions with the Korean Navy on uh, and again the, the purpose of, of why we're moving through this family of systems from SM2 to SM6 and SM3 is to show how we're developing a complete solution to the uh, threat that they face and have compatibility within their uh, inventory. This is the SM-2, and it's the primary anti-air warfare system on the K KDX-3 and KDX-2 ships in the Korean Navy today. Moving from SM SM-2, this is the SM-6. The SM-6 is uh, a missile that is in use today. Uh, with the U.S. Navy, and we are in discussions with um, providing it to the Korean Navy. When you bring all, when you bring the capability together, SM SM6 now provides uh, the ROC Navy with an anti-air warfare capability, an anti-ship capability, and ballistic and tactical missile defense cap. So it's it's three modes out of the same missile and it, it too loads into the Mark 41 vertical launch canister, the same as SM2, SM6, and SM3. All could reside in the same vertical launch canister. It, is, it, it brings an unprecedented multi-role capability to a single platform that, uh, that has not been available in the past. And now we've, we've worked our way up to the SM-3. The SM-3 now provides an exo-atmospheric intercept for e intermediate range ballistic missiles. Uh, it is based off of the same uh, standard missile family, 
out of the same Mark 41 vertical launch system and is similar in boost and the forebody of, of the missile. What's different is now we've added a third stage that allows it to take a, that allows it to take a kill vehicle exo atmospheric and using hit to kill technology uh, neutralizes the warhead of, of, of the, the, the threat missile.